In fact, as a woman, I have no country. As a woman, I want no country. As a woman, my country is the whole world. Virginia Woolf, three guineas. I've always felt like I belong to the whole world, and I've always wanted to see her in all of her entirety. What country are you from? Where are you from? If you're like me, you've probably heard that question a lot, no matter where you travel. But it's a question that I have a hard time answering. And if you're like me, the child of immigrants, you can probably understand why. Like many other human beings around the world, my parents, Beryl and Darlington Brown, migrated to Brooklyn from the twin island nation of Trinidad and Tobago. Not many people know about us. It's a small country. And usually when I explain that we're in the Caribbean, they respond, ah, Jamaica. <laughs> I was born in Brooklyn, which makes me American. But because my parents are from Trinidad and Tobago, I had a very strong accent as a child, which made my friends ask me, where are you from? What country are you from? Do I say that I'm Trinidadian, American, both? I usually just say my parents are from Trinidad and Tobago. Insert explanation of geographical location here. <laughs> and that I was born in Brooklyn. But I'm not sure if telling people what country or countries I'm from sheds much light on who I am. Human migrations are as old as humanity itself. Human beings have been traveling the world in search of new opportunities, land, sometimes just for adventure. Some migrations have been forced due to war, famine, or other man-made or natural disasters. As the climate continues to change, human migrations will continue to grow. Because I'm a descendant of enslaved Africans from Trinidad and Tobago and indentured East Indians and entrepreneurial Europeans, <laughs> I have had a lot to think about in terms of my lineage. My lineage tells of many migrations from many continents, Africa, Europe, Asia, South America, and even Europe. So what country am I from? When I moved to Copenhagen, Denmark 20 years ago, this question seemed to follow me. And it seemed that the older I got, the more uncomfortable I became with the question and the more dissatisfied with the answers I gave. As a woman, my country is the whole world. I've been teaching for the past 11 years, and my students come from all over the world. They come from Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, Somalia, Palestine, Eritrea, to name a few. And I've noticed that they too often get asked this question. And very often, we know very little about the countries that are given as answers. A good example would be Denmark. Not many Americans know about Denmark. <laughs> they usually confuse it with the Netherlands. <laughs> many associate Denmark with being the happiest country in the world. But if your heart and your minds are open, you will know that there is a place here where migrant families and their children live, surrounded by fences and barbed wire, they are watched by prison guards, although the only crime they have committed is crossing the border, seeking asylum. These children cannot go to school because the people who live here, Denmark wants to deport. Many times these families are stuck here for years because they are in danger if they go back home. These people are certainly not happy. 
In May 2018, I fulfilled one of my lifelong dreams. I published my first book. <laughs> Entitled Decolonial Daughter, Letters from a Black Woman to Her European Son, I sought to tell my son and anyone else who was interested about our lineage, where we came from, and our migrations. I wanted to tell him about the countries that I claim as home, Trinidad and Tobago, the United States, and now Denmark. As a migrant myself, and as a woman who was raising a child in a culture other than her own, I recognize how important it was that I explained to my son, and again, anyone else who was interested, how diverse stories can be in terms of lineages, migrations, and identities. Again, as someone who is the descendant of enslaved Africans, indentured East Indians, entrepreneurial Europeans, I've ha I have had much to think about in terms of lineages identities and migrations, and as a woman, and how that impacts me today. I have often thought about the women who have come before me and wondered what their lives were like. And when I say before, I'm not just talking about one or two generations before, I'm talking about like all the way back. And I'm not only thinking about the women in my lineage, Living here in Europe has forced me to think about the women here in Europe. I have thought about so many times the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of women who were murdered over hundreds of years because they were accused of being a witch. A witch. This summer, my friend, the writer Deborah Cowell reminded me that witch stands for woman in total control of herself. <laughs> Many of these women who were murdered were healers, teachers, caretakers of the land, women who were not in accordance with the patriarchal system that wielded its iron fist throughout Europe, sucker punching her into obedience. Woman in total control of herself. In very much the same way, I have thought about the land, our relationship to her, how we relate to her, and how this is very much bound together with how we relate to the feminine, or lack thereof. In many cultures around the world, the idea of owning land is a ridiculous one. So when the Europeans arrived in the so-called New World, many indigenous people were like, what? <laughs> how can you own land? through violence, apparently. <laughs> Europe's impact on the so-called new world cannot be denied. A legacy of this impact is that we as human beings are, apart, are, are separate from nature and not apart, which many indigenous cultures throughout the world has upheld since time immemorial. Another impact not to be dismissed is the myriad of cultures that existed to ensure many of our spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical survival. Another impact, of course, is the role of women. <laughs> For many indigenous cultures, women were not property. Again, were considered caretakers of the lands, were consulted in important issues, in cultures that practice personal property, it was actually passed down through the matrilineal line. Even most pre-Abrahamic cultures respected the feminine and the life-giving properties associated with that energy. They understood that the health of a people depends much on the health of the mother and the health of the earth. It is very interesting that in our very patriarchal society, the mother, the earth, has been othered. It is under the watch of patriarchy that militaries arise to protect the raping and plundering 
of our land and our people. It is patriarchy that protects the structural violence that is embedded in our societies. It is patriarchy that has its boot on our wombs, on our children, on our mothers, on our fathers, our brothers and sisters. It is patriarchy that separates children from their mothers at borders, locks them up, and has no regard for humanity. Do you want to know the true extent of human power? Reverse engineer patriarchy and dismantle it. For every step in patriarchy, ask yourself not only what is the complete opposite, but what is the most humane? It's funny because many of you now are probably thinking that I'm advocating matriarchy. But I'm not talking in binaries here. I'm not talking in polar opposites that encourage us to neglect the rich sector of life that exists in between. I'm not talking about women in power and men without. Hierarchies breed inequality and we're not lobsters. I'm talking about a return to the intelligence that recognize the power of the earth, the power of the feminine, and how we relate to this is very much bound up with issues of the environment, racism, sexism, transphobia, and white supremacy. In an attempt to do what those before me could not do, I hope that by piecing back my lineage, I'm, I can better equip my son for life. This is why I wrote the book. <laughs> I grew up with the knowledge that I shared the same birthday as my great grandmother, something that I was made to feel was of great import. Perhaps this explains why all throughout my life I've been obsessed with deciphering the whispers of the woman in my family, trying to salvage a story that would explain where I come from and where I can go. On a sunny day in June in Berlin in a cafe across from the Gorky Theater, all of these ideas came together when I found myself in conversation with the black consciousness scholar, activist, and artist Simi Dali. She started talking about the origins of the word country, which inspired the poem that I'm about to read for you. And we're gonna play a little bit. <laughs> I start the poem with a prayer, <laughs> and the prayer, because the name of my book is Decolonial Daughter, and a decolonial practice for me is when I think about a higher power, is to think about that higher power as a feminine. That's a first step for me, because I was growing up, I was raised to think that it was a masculine. <laughs> so country, the map to liberation. Oh, great grandmother spirit, give us your peace so that we can love as you love. Make us healthy so that we can have a good life. We praise you, oh, great grandmother spirit. And then I put a quote from Hamlet, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, Hamlet. So I'm gonna say a word three times and I'm gonna ask you to repeat it. And I want you to just really feel how it vibrates through your body because our voices, our bodies are instruments and notice where it's coming from and you know, country. 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 Thank you. <laughs> so again, I ask, what country are you from? And we'll do it another time. Country. 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 What country are you from? And then let's look at the word country. Let's look at the definition. We, use, we often use words throughout life that we have no idea actually what it means. <laughs> so country, it's a noun, plural countries. One, a nation with its own government occupying a particular territory. 
Two, districts and small settlements outside large towns, cities, or the capital. Three, an area or region with regard to its physical features. The origins, Middle English from Old French country, from medieval Latin contrata, terra, land, lying, opposite, from Latin contra, against, opposite. Country. 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 What country are you from? <laughs> And then, thanks to Simi Dali, we came up with cunt, <laughs> right? And then tree. So we look at the definition of cunt, which is a noun, and it's a woman's genitals. At least some of us, not all women have cunts, but many of us do. And the origins is Middle English of dramatic origins related to Norwegian and Swedish dialect, kunta and Middle Low German, Middle Dutch, and Danish dialect, Kunte. And then we look at tree, the word tree, which is also a noun. One, it's a woody perennial plant, typically, typically having a single stem or trunk, growing to a considerable height and bearing lateral branches, etc. Two, a wooden structure or part of a structure. Three is what we want to pay attention to. It's a thing that has a branching structure resembling that of a tree, also tree diagram, a diagram with a structure of branching connecting lines representing different processes and relationships. That's what we want to focus on. So we have cunt, tree. What cunt, tree are you from? What tree of cunts do you descend from? <laughs> what is your maternal lineage? Who are the women that came before you? What are the names that you cannot remember, or perhaps you do? Stitch your lineage back together with their names. Who is the woman through whose body you pass between the unseen to the seen? And who was the woman through whom she passed? And over and over again, all the way back, until she is free. And if you do not know, how does that play in perpetuating the powers that be? How does it play in strengthening the patriarchy? Why is it that the mother has been othered? And I particularly think about the mothers on borders who are having their children removed from them. Why is it that the mother has been smothered? Why is it that we know not our mothers? Find out what gets in the way of that and destroy it. I think of the children torn from mothers. I think of the children whose mothers are raped. I think of the women whose lives are not valued. Who are the women who came before you? What are their stories? What are their names? Say their names. Smash the patriarchy with their names. Cunt trees have no borders. Cunt trees have no flags. Cunt trees have no military. Cunt trees have no visas. Cunt trees have no passports. From cunt trees, we do not flee. They are in your, our blood. What is your cunt tree? So the next time someone asks you what country you're from, Start with the name of your mother, and then your mother's mother. And if you should not know them, name the name of the woman or woman who mothered you. And if you are without that, invent them from the very fabric of mythology that have come before you, and in their utterance, they will become real and present. I believe that it is in the answering of this question that paves the way to liberation. 
I am the daughter of Beryl Balbir Singh. Beryl Balbir Singh is the daughter of Hildred Charles. Hildred Charles is the daughter of Francis Lopez, and Francis Lopez is the daughter of Rose Lopez. And then I end with a rewrite of Shakespeare, because why not? <laughs> the rediscovered country from whose born all travelers return. Thank you. Woo!